Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. The website presents eight self-improvement lessons uh, which come from my 31 years as a veteran family systems therapist. Lesson four in the website is about improving your relationships. This video is a summary of what I've learned across many years with hundreds of conflicted people. How can you resolve relationship problems? What is a relationship problem? I propose that relationships exist to fill mutual needs. Relationships range from harmonious to problematic and conflictual and stressful. Think for a moment, do you have a relationship problem with someone, child or an adult? If so, what is it? When you don't get some needs met with another person, you have a relationship problem. Or, if they are not getting some needs of you with you, they have a relationship problem. When this occurs, why? Why does this happen? In my judgment, there are three reasons that a relationship problems are universal. We all have them. Everybody has them. High, low, young, old, male, female. The first is unawareness. Many people are not aware of what's going on inside of them, inside of their partner, or between them. They're just not aware. It's not a priority for them. They don't know how to do it. Along with unawareness is ignorance. Ignorance promotes relationship problems. People don't know what they don't know about effective, healthy, satisfying relationships, how to communicate effectively, and about who's running their life, a true self or a false self. So unawareness and ignorance are core reasons people have relationship problems. Part of the result of those two factors is people don't know what they need. They often haven't identified, what do I need from you? What do you need from me? So unknown needs are a major factor, an ingredient of relationship problems. The third of three factors in most relationship problems is people do not know how to problem solve. That's a learned skill. It's one of seven skills you need to know to have satisfying relationships. You can learn all seven skills in lesson two in my free, non-commercial, ad-free website. Seven skills in lesson two. The last one is problem solving. If you have relationship problems with various people, I propose you don't yet know how to problem solve. Instead, <clears throat> you and your partner probably do some popular things called arguing, fighting, avoiding, pleading, hinting, demanding, manipulating, controlling, uh, ignoring, numbing out, denying. Do you use any of those strategies? Those are all lose-lose strategies, meaning neither partner gets their, their core needs met. So people don't know how to problem solve. So what can you do to solve your relationship problems with anybody? The very first step is to use awareness and say, I have a problem. It's surprising how many people don't even acknowledge that. They just say, I feel bad. Well, why is that? Well, I just feel bad. Acknowledge without shame, without guilt, without blame, I have a problem. The next thing to do, which I suspect you've never done, or rarely, is what I call do a self-check, S-E-L-F. A major reason that people don't get along with each other, and people sometimes don't get along with themselves, is they are ruled by what can be called a false self. That's a separate topic and a separate video. What I'm advocating here is uh, make the habit <clears throat> of checking. 
in general and when you have a problem, who's ruining my life? My true self or a false self? If the answer is a false self, you have a bigger problem than a relationship with someone else. So learn how to free your true self to rule your life. Once you assess yourself, assess your partner with compassion, not scorn, not blame. Who's running my relationship partner's life? A true self? There's a specific way of telling. Or a false self? If your partner is ruled by a false self, your options about resolving your relationship problems are limited. See my video about how to get along with difficult people to see your options. If, in the best of worlds, your true self and their true self are running your respective personalities, do an attitude check. You're using awareness. Check your attitude. There are three possibilities. My needs are more important than yours to me right now. Or, my needs are less important to me than yours right now. The best of three possible attitudes is, here and now, I really feel your needs are just as important as mine. If you have that attitude, your odds are the best for resolving your problem. If you have either of the other attitudes, your odds are low. So do a self-check, do an attitude check. Another option you have, which can be very powerful, <clears throat> is review your Bill of Rights, Bill of Personal Rights. You probably don't have one. See the article in Lesson 4 in my website to illustrate what is a Bill of Personal Rights. It's the fundamental set of beliefs that we all need in order to be effective assertors. You can't solve your problems, meaning fill your needs, unless you assert your needs. That's a skill that you can learn in Lesson 2. So, um, be clear on your rights as a dignified, worthy human being, regardless of your age, your gender, your status, your title. And as you do that, be aware that your problem partner has got exactly the same rights as you. You're truly equal in dignity. Other things may differ, but not your dignity. The next step is use skill number two in lesson number two. Dig down and identify specifically what do you need from your partner. What's causing your discomfort? Um, there is another video called Ingredients uh, of an Effective Relationship. I forget the title, but it's something like that. But take a look at that video. It outlines for you standard needs we all have in order to make satisfying relationships. Things like, I need respect. I need to trust you. I need you to trust me. I need you to confide in me. I need companionship. I need stimulation. Things like that. We all need them. So dig down and identify which of your basic needs with this other person is not being filled. Then, because you believe their needs are just as important as yours, estimate, well, what does my partner need from me? If you don't know, ask. They may or may not know. Help them identify what they need from you. If they say, well, I don't need anything from you, I'm okay with you, then the problem lies with you. What need of yours is not getting met? The next thing you can do, train yourself to become aware of up to 20 ways people block effective communication between each other. Often, relationship problems come from the fact that people don't know how to communicate. It's really not a relationship problem, it's a communication problem. There are 20 specific ways people block effective communication. See the list of these blocks in Lesson 2 in my website. Print it out and use it. Take a look at how you're communicating with your relationship partner 
see if you're using any of these communication blocks. If you are, you are responsible for fixing them. If the other person is, then you get into problem solving about communication effectiveness. That's the subject of lesson two. Okay, just identify, is our communication the problem or is something else causing me not to get my needs met? Check communication blocks and effectiveness. Another resource to use in especially troubling relationship problems <coughs> are uh, two ageless wisdoms called the Serenity Prayer and the Gestalt Prayer. The Serenity Prayer, as you may know, in effect says, please give me the wisdom to judge what can I change in this situation and what can I not change? And then give me the strength to accept what I cannot change. The Gestalt Prayer was given to us by a skilled a therapist named Fritz Perls. The Gestalt is a German word, which I think means whole, W-H-O-L-E, something like that. But in effect, Fritz said, I am I, and you are you. I do my thing, and you do your thing. I'm not in this world to fulfill your expectations, and you are not in the world to fulfill mine. If by chance we meet, it's beautiful. If we don't, it can't be helped. I find that a reassuring reality check when I get stuck in major relationship problems, which I certainly have. So keep those prayers in mind to help you stay grounded and stay clear. The last eighth suggestion I want to make here in resolving relationship problems as you try these other seven suggestions in your own way, the eighth step is look at the outcome. After all is said and done with your problem partner, did you get your needs met in a way that felt good enough? I would say that's successful relationship interaction. If the other person would say the same thing, you succeeded. If not, you have some work to do. Um, please do study the related videos for Lesson 4 here on YouTube, and even better, study Lessons 1 through 4 on my nonprofit website, sfhelp.org. Thanks for watching.